Let's first start out by talking about indirect closing techniques. When it comes to closing, I personally believe that a lot of people see closing as something that's very difficult and very complicated. And if they could try to improve one skill that they had, that they would do everything they could to become a better closer and that they see that closing involves some sort of perfect personality and years of sales experience and some high degree of aggressiveness and ways of communication. But the reality is, is that I personally believe closing should be the easiest step of the sales process. If you do a lot of the correct things along the way and you're doing all the standard blocking and tackling that you should do, then when you reach the end of the sales process, closing the sale should be incredibly easy. It should not be crazy for the deal to actually close itself. And what I'll do is I'll go through some of the standard things that you can do to make closing the easiest step of the sales process. And a lot of it starts with your sales message and what you're communicating and how you're communicating with your prospect. So like I've said before, if you are a product selling salesperson and you're going out there, this is who I work for, this is what I sell, this is what it does, do you need what I sell? Then you're going to make prospects very guarded. And if you try to sell to everybody, then of course you're going to be trying to close prospects that don't fit with what you sell and closing will be extremely difficult. But if you use more of a consultative selling approach where you're communicating how you can help and you're looking for prospects that have the problems that you can help to fix and you're asking good questions to learn about the prospects, to identify which prospects need the help that you have to offer and avoiding the prospects that don't need your product, and you're talking about your product in a very clear way, then these are the prospects that are easier to close. And this is how closing can become easier. And so a big part of what I just talked about there is the step of qualifying prospects, which is asking those questions, asking questions to qualify prospects, to separate the good from bad, so that you're not trying to close those bad prospects. If you're trying to sell something to someone that doesn't need what you sell or can't buy what you sell, yes, closing is extremely difficult. So when you are a better qualifier and eliminate the prospects that you shouldn't be wasting your time on, you will immediately become a better closer. Closing will immediately become easier. And when you're not able to close a prospect, usually at that exact moment, you're facing some sort of objection. I'm not interested. We don't need what you sell. This would be too complicated for us to buy or to implement. And with that, if you can improve your ability to respond best to objections and get around objections and overcome objections, you will greatly improve those moments when you're not able to close. For example, if you get an objection when you're not able to close and you're able to keep that conversation going, then that will give you maybe another opportunity to go for the close later after a little bit more discussion. So that gives you multiple close attempts, which can improve your ability to close. And of course, there's the old saying that people buy from people that they like. If you're able to create a high level of rapport with prospects, it will make selling to those prospects easier. The more rapport you have, the easier closing will be. And so whether it's minimizing the objections that you face or building more rapport with prospects, a lot of that comes down to minimizing how much you sound like a salesperson that's trying to sell something. The more you sound like a salesperson, the less people will trust you, the less rapport you'll have, the more objections you'll face. So if you can find a way to decrease how much you sound like a salesperson, you will make closing easier. And we've talked about this concept before that don't sell the product, sell the meeting. This definitely makes closing easier because if you're always trying to sell the product at every step of the sales process, then you're going to face a lot of objections and it will be difficult to push the prospect along. But if you can embrace that concept of I'm not trying to sell the product and put that in the front of your mind and communicate that and focus on the those internal steps of the sales process of first, I'm just trying to start the conversation and sell the meeting and then progress to explaining how you can help. And then possibly later progressing to that decision. If you can move the prospect through this process, not only do you face less objections, but it changes what you're trying to close for. If you go from trying to close the product and validate interest in the prospect buying in your initial contact with the prospect, if you go from that to closing for trying to just start the conversation, that's not only more logical and the actual next step that you need to go to, but it's an easier close. It's easier to close for selling the conversation than to close the prospect on buying your product. So embracing this concept will immediately make closing easier and will make you a better closer. 
Now let's talk about actual things that you'll do when you're actually trying to close the prospect. There's one thing that you can start to do if you're not doing it already, and that is trial closing. Trial closing is basically a test close. So if you are actually closing the prospect, you're trying to see if they're ready to move forward to the next step. A trial close is more checking in with the prospect to see where they're at and what direction they're leaning or what direction everything is going. So basically, you're just checking in with the prospect. And this is very helpful because when you check in with the prospect and do a trial close, it's going to provide extremely valuable information. And you don't just trial close at the end of the sales process. In fact, you probably don't trial close at the very end. You trial close every step of the way. So if you talk to a prospect multiple times during your sales process, you could trial close them in every conversation. How are we looking on this? Are we going in the right direction? So every step of the way, you can validate that you're going in the right direction. And this is valuable information because if you start to go in the wrong direction, you can get that feedback and you can make the corrections along the way that are needed. And so here are some examples of some trial close questions. What do you think about what we've discussed so far? How do you think this fits with what you're needing? How would that feature help you? Is this something Thing you would use? Are we heading in the right direction? Is this what you were expecting to see? So there are, of course, many other trial close questions, but as you can see, those are not necessarily saying, are you ready to move on? Are you ready to purchase? That Those are more checking in with what is the prospect thinking? If you don't trial close and just power through, you can assume that the prospect likes what you're showing them or likes your product, but that's not a good thing because your assumption could be off. You want to get that real feedback from the prospect to validate that that you're going in the right direction and, and that they understand everything that you're communicating to them when you're talking to them about your product and how it can help. The assumptive close is where you, instead of asking the prospect if they want to move forward, you're assuming that they want to move forward. For example, if you're talking to a prospect, instead of saying, would you like me to set you up for a free consultation? You just assume that they want a free consultation, that they want to move forward with something like, we do free consultations every day at 10 a.m. What day works best for you? So the question of what day works best for you is an assumptive close. An alternative close is kind of similar, but it's where you're giving them multiple choices as you assume that they want to move forward. We do our free consultations on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which day works best for you? So instead of asking the prospect if they want to move forward, you give them a couple choices and then ask them which one they would like to choose. Another tactic is to turn questions into statements for example, a question might be, would you like to meet next week? When you ask this to a prospect, you're allowing the prospect to make the decision of, should we meet or do I want to meet? Well, you can remove that thought process from the prospect side, which might potentially eliminate opportunity for doubt or thinking about this. And you can turn that into a statement to say, yeah, you know what, we should meet next week. What day works best for you? Another example of this could be using this in your personal life. So if you are with a friend or a partner and you want to eat a particular type of food, instead of saying, do you want to eat Mexican food? You could say, oh, let's go eat Mexican food. And the other person can certainly challenge that or disagree with that. But by being more persuasive and turning the question into a statement, you can decrease the potential for them not going in that particular direction. When you're trying to close prospects, you could ask what we call soft close questions. For example, when it's time to get the prospect to move forward, you could ask them the question of what would you like to do next? What direction would you like to go from here? Do you want to continue talking about this? When would you like to talk again? What does the path forward look like? So these are very powerful and closing in this way can really help to build rapport because instead of being pushy and pushing the prospect along, you're allowing the prospect to decide what direction to go. So it can help to build rapport. Also, when the prospect makes the decision to move to a presentation or move to move forward with the decision, you can know that you did not push them along, that that was their decision. So it's a more qualified opportunity instead of someone that you pushed along, maybe with an assumptive close. So it's a more qualified prospect with this scenario. But here's a caveat. You need to do a lot of the other standard blocking and tackling before you use a soft close. For example, you need to do a good job at building interest and communicating how you help and doing this with qualified prospects that need what you sell. Because for example, if you do this with a prospect that you haven't built interest yet and you say, what would you like to do next? Then a thing that they might say is, I don't want to do anything next. So you need to be in a comfortable position when you use the soft close. 
If you aren't there, or if you just want to be a little bit more firm in your close, you can certainly use hard close questions. For example, are you ready to move forward to the next step in the process? And you tell them what that is. That would be a presentation or a demonstration or a contract or a signature. What would you need to be able to make a commitment to move forward? If you have everything that you want, are you prepared to move forward? So this is a good question. A lot of times prospects say, oh, your price is too high or your product doesn't do this. Well, a good thing to ask is, okay, if I give you the price that you're asking for, are you ready to move forward today? Or, okay, if we make the product do that and meet that requirement that you have, are you ready to move forward? When are you going to make your final decision? And then if the prospect is delaying for X number of months, if you try to close and they say, oh, we'll need to come back to this in six months. Okay, but do you mind if I ask if there will be something different at that time where that will be a better time to look at this? So the prospect's kicking the can down the road. And your logic here is to ask, basically, is everything going to be the same then? Or will there be something different then? Is, is there a new budget at that time? Is there going to be something off your plate where you can spend more time on this? What's going to be different at that time? And it can get some good information from the prospect. Maybe they have a good reason why six months is a better time to talk about this or it'll be interesting if their answer is, well, not really. Okay, if it's the same then as it is now, is there an opportunity just to push this through now? Or maybe it won't be a good time to look at this then either, which is actually a takeaway tactic. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Is there anything that is preventing you from being able to move forward with this? So if the prospect's not buying or moving forward, ask them if there's something preventing them. Find out what that key thing is and then address that directly. If it's the price or if there's some sort of feature or if it's something else going on or if it has to do with their organization. The next tactic is a partnership plan. And this is basically, at the most basic level, this is a table. It's a table with rows and columns. And what you put in this table is for each row is a task, a task that needs to be completed between today when you're presenting this to a prospect and them either purchasing your product or them going live on your product if there's some sort of implementation. So this is kind of like a to-do list. Not only you, but also the prospect needs to do between today and everything being complete. And you can list that out step by step. You could put a due date for each step and you could put an owner for each task. Some of those owners might be on your side as the salesperson and some of the owners might be on the prospect side. And then you can put a status for each. And what you can do is you can present this partnership plan at a strategic moment to the prospect. For example, you could present this at the end of your presentation, or you could present this when you're delivering your proposal. And you can present this to the prospect and get them to agree to this with some language like this. If you'd like to keep moving forward, this is what our partnership plan looks like. These are some of the steps that need to be taken between now and you getting up and running. Based on what we've discussed today, are you interested in moving forward with this plan? So what you're basically closing for here is not necessarily the purchase at this exact moment. You're closing them on agreeing with the plan. And at this point, you either might get their complete buy-in or they might not be able to commit to the full plan. So if they're not able to commit to the full plan, your fallback position is to just close for the next step. So if you can see this example plan, where we're at today when I'm presenting this to a prospect is at the end of my demonstration. And you can see it's marked as complete. The next step is a discovery meeting. So what I can do after I present this is close the prospect on the discovery meeting. If I can't get them to agree to the whole plan, I can at least close them on the next step with something like, okay, no problem at all. Do you have enough interest to move to the next step of the plan? And you close them for the next step. Whether they agree to the whole plan or just the next step, what you can do then is you can edit the plan with them live right then. And what you're doing here is you're editing the task to make them more correct. Maybe there are some tasks that are missing. Maybe there are some tasks that you did not have correct when you built it. Maybe the dates aren't correct or the owners aren't correct. So what would be great is if you build this plan together with the prospect with something like, great, and time estimates look correct and acceptable to you? Do you have anything that you would wanna change or add? So you make changes right then with the prospect and then get them to agree to it when it's all said and done, after all the changes have been made. The way that this can really be a helpful tool for your closing is that as you're 
trying to manage the prospect through these steps and through your sales process, the prospect can often delay meetings or cancel meetings. And when they do that, you can use the partnership plan to keep the prospect on track. So for example, if the prospect says, I need to cancel this meeting and reschedule it next month, you can fall back to the partnership plan with something like this. Sure, we can definitely delay the meeting, but according to our agreed partnership plan, you want to have the system implemented by January 1st. If we delay the meeting to next month, that will likely impact your ability to be up and running by January 1st. And we have two choices there. Either we need to adjust the plan and move your date from January 1st, or we need to schedule the meeting before next month. We need to schedule it next week or move quicker on the rescheduling of that meeting. So which would you like to do? So here the prospect is trying to delay things and you're using the partnership plan to keep the prospect in line. And that can be a tool you can use to continue to manage the prospect throughout the remainder of your sales process and sales cycle. Another tactic is to find a compelling event. So a compelling event is some sort of event on the prospect side that you can use to pressure them to keep moving forward or to move forward with the purchase. For example, you could have a natural compelling event on the prospect side, which could be a contract expiring. If you sell something that replaces something that the prospect currently uses and their current contract is expiring, that expiration date is a compelling event. And you can use that to manage the prospect along when they try to delay meetings or if they're or if they try to delay the purchasing of your product. So an expiring contract is definitely a compelling event, something very compelling on the prospect side. If the prospect is opening new buildings, buildings, opening new sites or moving, that's a very significant event. And you can use that event to manage the sales process and improve your ability to close. If the prospect is using something today that you would be replacing and that current product that they're using is being discontinued on a certain date or the contract or warranty is expiring, that's a very compelling event. So finding out these days can really help you to be a better closer because you can use that date to manage the process and as a closing tactic at certain points. Now, it could be very likely that you try to ask questions looking for a compelling event and can't find one. Well, you can manufacture a compelling event by, for example, creating a discount with an expiration date. If you provide a discount that expires at the end of the month, even knowing you know that you could probably give that discount again next month, the end of the month becomes a compelling event. There's pressure on the prospect to purchase by that date. So you can use that to improve your ability to close the prospect. So it could be an expiring discount. It could be an expiring promotion. You could talk about how there's limited product availability. So the prospect, so what you sell is very limited and scarce and the prospect should move more quickly. And you can use that to motivate the prospect to move forward because if they wait, the product might not be available. So these are ways to manufacture compelling events and whether it's manufactured or natural, finding a compelling event and using that strategically when you're trying to close the prospect can improve your ability to close. The next tactic is something we've talked about a little bit and now I wanna drill into it in more detail and that is the sales takeaway. If you think about what most salespeople do is they try to say stuff and perform actions to get the prospect to move forward. The sales takeaway is basically the exact opposite of that. The opposite of trying to get the prospect to move forward. It's saying something that basically does not try to get the prospect to move forward. And an example of this might be to express doubt in the fit or justification in moving forward. So typically, if you're a salesperson, you're saying something in the direction of, you need this, you'll love this, I can't wait to show you this. And so that's saying stuff to get the prospect interested and move forward. A takeaway would be saying something like, oh, you know, it might not be a fit for you, or maybe this isn't the right time for you. And so that's the opposite of trying to get the prospect to move forward. And the reality is, is that this is an extremely powerful tactic to use if you use it at the right time because it's the exact opposite of what most salespeople do. So if most salespeople are always pushing the prospect to move forward, at strategic moments, you do the exact opposite. That can be very powerful. The key is, is knowing when to do it and how to use it. But I just wanna give you some examples of sales takeaways. So one example could be if a prospect keeps rescheduling meetings on you. So you've tried to reschedule three or four times and the prospect keeps rescheduling on you. Well, you could certainly just keep rescheduling until they meet with you. But but one thing you may want to do after the prospect does this time and time again is you might want to do a takeaway. And that would look something like this. Well, it seems like you're having trouble finding time for this. Maybe this isn't the right time for you to discuss this. And the logic here is, is that instead of just scheduling and then hoping that they show up or rescheduling if they ask you to reschedule again, at this moment, you 
you're pushing back on the prospect and you're doing a takeaway. And the prospect may either let you take it away or they may challenge the takeaway. So if they let you take it away, they may say, no, you're, you're right. I just don't have time to this and I'm just wasting your time. So let's get together next year or next month or whatever. And so what the takeaway did right there is it saved you time from dealing with them, wasting your time, wasting their time because they just don't have time for you. And the takeaway allowed that to come to light. But if the takeaway is incorrect, the prospect may challenge it to say something like, no, 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 no. This is extremely important because our current system is expiring. We need to find a replacement. So I need to talk to you. I've just been extremely busy. You have my full attention in the next meeting, let's get it on the calendar. So what the takeaway did there is it corrected the direction, it brought the prospect more engaged and the takeaway helped to improve the direction and momentum and that's how it can help. Another example is if the prospect is on the fence, meaning they're not buying, but they're not also walking away, they're just in the middle and, and kind of in an idle position. And so this is a great moment to do the takeaway with something like, it seems like you're having trouble figuring out what direction to go. Maybe this isn't a good fit for you. So certainly, the prospect is on the fence and they're not able to move forward. So if they're not able to move forward for good reasons, then the takeaway may help bring that to light. And you push back on them by saying, hey, maybe this isn't a good fit for you. They may say, no, you're right. I'm just too stressed and it's just too much right now. And I just don't have the money for this purchase. So it's probably not the right fit. And the takeaway helped bring that to light. And, and that's probably a good thing. That was probably a customer that you shouldn't sell your product to. But if you do the takeaway and it is a good fit, they're just, you know, kind of needing a little push along. If you say, maybe this isn't a good fit for you, they may say, no, 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 I do need it. I'm just overthinking it. Let's do it. Let's move forward. And in that case, the takeaway helped to create momentum and get things moving forward. You may come across prospects where things are pretty good, where they may be a little bit interested in what you have to sell. But if things are pretty good, they may have trouble spending money on your product. So with these prospects, you could end up wasting time doing demonstrations. But at the end of the day, when it's time to spend money, money, they can't get it approved because things are pretty good. And you might want to do a takeaway when you see that with something like, well, it sounds like you guys have done a pretty good job of putting all the right pieces in place. Maybe it doesn't make sense for us to spend too much time on this. So if things are pretty good and the prospect has all the right pieces in place, the takeaway may bring to light that they don't really need what you sell and that you might save everybody time and they might respond with something like, eh, you know, you're probably right. I like your product, but at the end of the day, I probably couldn't get the funding approved. And what you did there is you just saved everybody time or the takeaway may identify information that you didn't already know. So they may say, no, 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 we do have a lot of the right pieces in place, but we're missing this one piece and that's how your product helps. So that's why I'm talking to you. And that can then provide new information and help you to get more momentum in the opportunity. So as you can see here, there's a little bit of risk involved when you do a takeaway. So the key thing is, is when to do a takeaway. And for this, we're going to put prospects into three categories. You have a positive prospect, which is a prospect that's showing you a lot of interest and a lot of need for what you sell. You have a neutral prospect, which is a prospect who's not necessarily showing you a ton of interest, but also not showing you that they're not interested in what you sell. They're just kind of in the middle on the fence or has a little bit of interest and not yet walking away. And then you could put prospects in the negative category where they don't need what you sell and they're telling you that they don't want what you sell, they're walking away. And so if we look at these three categories of prospects, there's really only one category where we would do a sales takeaway because you'd never do a takeaway for someone who's saying, I love what you sell, I need what you sell, let's move forward. You would never say, oh, I don't know if it's a fit for you. And for the negative people, you would not do a takeaway for them because there's already been a takeaway. You don't need to take away something because they're already walking away. So the only real category where it makes sense to do a takeaway is when you have prospects in the middle where they're either on the fence and there's just a little bit of a need. By the way, when I say there's a little bit of a need, if you find a little bit of a need at the initial contact, you still want to get that prospect in the sales process and move them to a conversation. You wouldn't want to do a takeaway at the initial contact. It's in that conversation or the explanation where you've learned more about them and you've identified that there's just only a little bit of a need or only a little bit of interest and you can't qualify them fully. Then it's at that point that you would do the takeaway. So it's for more neutral prospects that have ended up 
in the middle of your sales process where you would do a sales takeaway. Well, and while it might seem risky to do the sales takeaway, it's actually not all that risky because you could potentially save yourself a lot of time by doing a takeaway to prospects that end up going away that you could have wasted a lot of time on. Now, there's three potential reactions that you can anticipate when you do a sales takeaway. First, the prospect could have no reaction. The prospect could confirm the disqualification, meaning you do a takeaway that's saying it, it might not be a fit and they say, you're right, it's not a fit and they go away. Or the prospect challenges the disqualification. Now, when you see the level of risk in doing the takeaway, you see it with the second potential reaction, which is you're talking to a prospect, you're scheduling a meeting with them, you're talking with them, you do a takeaway and then they go away and you lose that lead because they confirm the disqualification and you could see that as a loss. But the reality is, is that if you do the takeaway with the right prospects at the right time and they confirm the disqualification and go away, you've actually just saved yourself a lot of time. So it's not a risk if you do it at the right time with the right prospects. And if three happens, the prospect challenges the disqualification to say, no, 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 you're wrong because of this. You need to listen very closely because a lot of times when the prospect challenges the disqualification, they're going to provide new information that you might not know as the reasoning why it makes sense to keep moving forward. This is a really powerful thing that happens. Not only do you increase the momentum and the opportunity and can correct the direction of the opportunity, but at this point, the prospect actually begins to sell you. When the prospect challenges the disqualification, they sell you on why it makes sense to move forward instead of you selling them on moving forward with your product. So it's a really powerful thing that can happen. Why the takeaway can be so powerful is it can help to improve rapport. When you're doing the same thing that all other salespeople are doing, which is pushing the prospect to move forward, you can seem very normal and like a normal salesperson trying to sell something. When you do a takeaway, you're going to seem different. You're going to seem more genuine, more credible, more trustable, and that you care more about the prospect's interest than your own interest of just closing the sale. And this can help to improve rapport. It can help to improve your credibility because you can seem more trustable because you care about the prospect's best interest. It can improve your quality of leads because all those prospects that agree with your takeaway and go away, those are probably low quality prospects that would not have purchased from you. And you get those low quality leads out of your pipeline. So when you use this, you end up working on better quality leads. And when you do a takeaway, you can get prospects to get more engaged and start to move forward again. And it can improve deal momentum, especially on deals that are stalled out with on the fence and idle prospects. And like I said, listen closely when they challenge you because the takeaway can help to uncover new information that you might not have already known. And when you add up all of these by strategically using the takeaway, you can improve your close rate and you can become a better closer. Now we've actually already talked about the takeaway. We've talked about the takeaway regarding our cold calling model, where we do a soft takeaway at the beginning of the cold call. And we've talked about this already. And what that looks like is early in a cold call, doing a soft takeaway right after you maybe deliver your value proposition to say, we help businesses with this, but I don't know if you need what we provide. I don't know if you're a good fit with what we do. I don't know if we can help you in the same way. I don't know if you're interested in those types of improvements. I don't know if you're concerned concerned about those areas. I don't know if you're the right person to speak with. I don't know if it makes sense for us to talk. So we've talked about using this early in cold calls. You, we also use these in email messages. So these are what we call the soft takeaway. So instead of saying, maybe this isn't the right fit for you, or maybe it doesn't make sense to keep moving forward. This is a softer version of that, where right after we say something very powerful about how we can help, we do a soft takeaway to say, but I don't know if that, that's a fit for you, or I don't know if you're interested in that. So these are soft takeaways that you can, again, use in your cold emails, use in your cold calling. I actually use soft takeaways when I'm talking to people at different moments, where before I'm going to show them something. So I might say something like, I'm going to show you something here. I don't know if this is the type of thing that you've ever looked at. And then I show them. So a lot of times right before I show something, unveil something, talk about something, I will introduce it. And then right before I show it or talk about it, I will do a soft takeaway. So it might look something like, hey, I have a great idea for dinner. I don't know if you've ever done this before. And then I share that. So 
it's a way to kind of create a little curiosity, decrease the guardedness, decrease the level of pushiness on what I'm trying to show them. So I use the soft takeaway at all different moments, but again, you can use these types of takeaways in your cold calling and cold email. Okay, so that's pretty much it. A few key takeaways. Doing the other things right will make closing easier. In other words, all the other things that we've talked about before this training on closing will have already made you a better closer. For example, having a good sales message will make closing easier. Screening and qualifying prospects immediately makes closing easier. Improving objection handling will improve your close rate. Focusing on the sales process and closing on the right goal will make it you a better closer. Trial close every step of the way and strategically use the sales takeaway when appropriate. Okay, so that's the module on closing. The next module, we will talk about presentations and how to deliver and organize your presentations. If this has been helpful to you and if you've at least found one tip in this training module and you want to return the favor, very easy for you to do. Simply like, comment, share this video, subscribe to our channel. Any or all of those help us tremendously and none of those cost you anything. If that's interesting, but you're still not sure what direction to go. You may want to check out my book, The Smart Sales System, Sell Smarter, Not Harder, and you can get that on Amazon here. That's pretty much it. If you want more information on anything, if you want more tips, the best place to go is salescriptor.com. On our blog, there are all sorts of videos with sales tips. There are eBooks that you can download for free. If you have questions on the Sales Scriptor product, there's plenty of product information. And if you want to contact us for any reason, you can do it through chat or email or phone number on the website. That's pretty much it for today. Thanks for being here. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.